Hello, my name's Jacques Fabian. I'm a silver and goldsmith and I've been working in this industry for over 42 years now. Welcome to my studio. Come around, I want to show you a few of my bits and pieces that I've had over the years. These are some of my hammers that I use uh, to do my silversmithing. I like to make objects and larger pieces, that's my passion. And of course I still do a lot of jewellery as well. Some of the jewellery you will see is some brooches that are around the wall that I had done for a, uh, uh, an exhibition, which was wearable art. Some of my tools around the workshop you will become very familiar with because we'll be using it constantly throughout our series. And um, I want to show you a couple of little pieces that I've done over the years, which are just very, they mean a lot to me, so I've never sold these pieces. And um, there's different techniques that I've used, you incorporating both silver and wood and a lot of other alternative materials. We'll be working in silver and we will be working in copper, brass, gilding metal. So there's a few things that um, you're going to find yourself that you might like to sort of experiment and come up with some different uh, ideas and some different concepts for getting different textured finishes on your items. But all in all, I want to show you and teach you all the hand skills that you will require to make pretty much anything you want to true silversmithing, which is object making, and I do a lot of jewellery as well, as I said. But come through, and I'll show you some of the other areas that we've got here that we use. This is where I had my metal stakes, and a lot of these I have actually made myself. Reason being is that often you might not be able to find the tools that you require to make the piece that you've designed. So if that's the case, then I will turn up a little bit of steel, and I'd make up unusual shapes like this. This particular piece is actually the stem for a goblet. So I can hammer up my silver and I can shape it exactly the way I want it. So it's not just a run of the mill, everybody has the same design and same shape. I will also show you through this process how to make a lot of your tools and also how to make a lot of them out of wood, which is much more feasible and inexpensive to do so. So we'll go and cover through a number of these different tools. You'll see some wooden doming blocks down here. You'll see some steel ones here. And right through to mandrels, bracelet, oval, round, which we also work with our larger pieces to do our stems for a, a bowl or anything that we're making. And then through here, if you follow me through, this area here is where I do all of my soldering, annealing, and also melting of our metals, because sometimes we might melt and pour an ingot. And from that ingot, we would hand forge out a spoon or a ladle or something that we want to make that needs a little bit more thickness of material. That too we will be covering in this, this, this series. Over here, I've got my acid bath, which is sulfuric acid and water. And we'll discuss the different options that you can have with regards to acid. I have a bicarb, which is bicarbonate of soda, which neutralizes my acid. So I rinse everything off in there and then just some rinse water after that. I have an ultrasonic cleaner here, which helps to clean a lot of the finished pieces that we've done. Rectifier here for gold plating, gilding and rhodium plating, which we will also cover in our uh, series so that we can do a beautiful gold enrichment on the inside of the bowl, for example, and have a high polish finish on the outside. Fantastic finish. I just want to show you a couple of my hammers. I have a few that I've made myself, um, purely because I just wanted to have something of my, the certain weight uh, of hammer that I want to use at a particular time. Um, one is like this one, for example so that I can do a bit of raising and it's a little bit heavy which uh, allows me to force my metal f a little bit further than what um, a lighter hammer would allow me to do and I want to show you also my planishing hammer which is a hammer that I use constantly I've 
taken off the edges of the square section. This is the way it was purchased originally. I've filed that back, ground it back a little bit, emery papered, polished it, and that will allow me then to planish on slightly curved surfaces. And I've taken the edges off on that one. So when I planish, I planish in that very small area there, making sure that I don't have an edge that I accidentally catch my, my silver with, leaving an indent. Some of these hammers go way back. I've had them for many, many years. Uh, I used to buy White House hammers back in the day, and my White House hammers were fantastic. Uh, they don't make them as such anymore. They're a little bit different these days. For example, you can purchase these fairly easily on the market these days. These are also raising hammers. This one I've got a flat end on, and I've got a curved surface on the other for raising. This is basically for raising because it's very rounded on both ends and I can forge my metal forward, raise it forward or back, back raise. So a lot of these also I have purchased at really $2 shops as well. And with the $2 shop ones, I have actually have ground up the face to give me a textured finish. Now you can buy these these days with already a textured finish, but I like to make my own because then that's my style of texture and not just a commercial one that you get on the market. And some of these $2 hammers uh, are very good. Um, polish them, clean them all up, put a texture on there and off you go. Always make sure that you have a really beautifully clean, highly polished hammer so that when you're striking your silver, you're getting a really good finish on that, that surface of the metal. It's got less to clean up with afterwards. Then of course I've got a few mallets. They're all rawhide mallets and timber. Um, I will cover some of that later on when we actually start to use them.